here. What's up everybody, it's your favorite Wheeler Dealer's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Unique Toys Gazranka. I don't know, dude. Swindle. And we got three modes to go through. Luckily, one is very simple, and we have these two accessories to look at, so let's not dilly-dally. As you can see, he holds the gun in his hand just fine. All right, so let's talk about this. Before we do, I want to give a special shout out to Titan One Toys. That's who I bought this from. Great people over there. They work with you. Good customer service. Actually, money was a little tight these last couple of weeks, and then they let me split my payments up into two separate payments. Enough about my personal business, but they've done right by me. Their contact information is is in the description. I highly recommend you check them out. Anyway. Detailing wise, you have some silver paint here, 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 and here. All looks good, and the sculpt all looks great. The other good news is he has a ton of options. So we've already seen him hold it. He can also plug the whole thing into his arm, have a massive arm cannon. And then if you want to go more traditional G1, you can take this piece off and this piece off. Now you can get that a little bit more secure in the arm. And then on this side, plug these two in together, and he can hold it. Uh, I'm, I'm eight up and I got news for you. I'm probably going to get more eight up when I do this transformation. There's a lot of tabs. Who wants to guess or bet if I have to speed up some footage in this thing? I got 20 on it. Double up, homie. So yeah, so there, very traditional G1. So lots of options, lots of sculpt work, decent amount of paint work. I am a fan. You can also, while in truck mode, plug this thing in here and then you can plug the rocket launcher into the side of it and angle it up and then this piece into this side and angle it up giving you a very G1 looking Jeep. And then we have the combiner foot. You can see we got some toe tilt and we have an ankle rocker and that looks to be about it which is fine. I'm not sure if the ankles will tilt. I guess we'll look at it when we get it. I haven't ever attached it yet. Uh, lots of detailings though. Different color grays and silvers and reds throughout. Some translucents added to the sides. Looks really good. And then a very thoughtful thing that they gave you were these extra felt pieces for a little bit of added stability. So you just take the sticker off and apply them and you'll have a little bit of friction between this and your shelf. So let's talk about the figure himself. Uh, as a heads up, it comes in packaging, I think like this. It might even, this double hinge here might be fully extended. And you might think this is unsightly. It's because it is. You can just wrap it up like this, and now it looks much better. Okay, so for the head, we have, well, I feel like the lights aren't aimed in the right direction here. We have a silver paint applied to the face, and then we have a purple trans, uh, translucent, what is it called? Light piping. You know, I hate that. Uh, these are intended, I'm buying these to have re robot representations of the Combaticons on my shelf. I will probably do a metallic purple paint on the visor when it's all said and done. So, the head itself is on a hinged swivel, so very masterpiece of them. Head gets down to there, up to there, and rotates. Well done. Nicely done. And we have some silver accents on the crest and uh, on the helmet. And this plugs in there. You can get a little bit of a cheat out of it for pictures and such, but you know how that goes. Not a whole lot of detailings. We have a little bit of silver paint here on the chest, on the uh, you know the windshield, and then we have this silver that comes through here. We have some beige paint that matches really well, I might say, and uh, some silver paint there. Just more so accents. We do have a waist swivel, silver paint here, black paint, silver paint. So that looks good. On the arms, it's a little bit more plain. Just some red there, this black stripe there, and silver. The paint where it is applied is applied well throughout. Like it's very clean. It's a very clean application. All right, so let's talk about the shoulders. We do have silver, like a gunmetal silver on uh, on the, the wheels, and then we have rubber tires. So this is on a basic universal system. It is ratcheted. The ratchets here are strange. We'll get there. Um, but you can get out to 90 degrees, and you get the full swivel around. You get a bicep swivel just above the elbow. The elbow, the elbow, elbow, the elbow itself is on a single hinge, and you get past 90 degrees, so no problems there. The wrist swivel and the fingers are on a base pin knuckle, and that's shared with the index finger separately from the rest of the three. But the index finger is actually at a decent enough angle where you can make him pointing. It doesn't always look like he's playing the uh, playing the typewriter or typing on the typewriter. I guess you should say. Uh, articulation is the same for the other side. 
So the hips, they're ratcheted universals. However, uh, no ratchets out to the side, which some people think is fine. It's not my preferred way of doing business, but you get the full Van Dam, and you do not get the full Monty. But if you lift this up just a taste, you can get about 45 degrees. It's this front bumper that keeps it from moving forward, and I'm not going to apply a whole lot of pressure to it. You can get the whole bit back. The ratchets are strange. Like, watch as I move it and listen to the ratchet click. It's like, it's, like, it's almost like the ratchet is off beat. Here we go. You see that? And I got... It's strange. It's very strange. Uh, thigh swivels built around the universal. That works fine. Knees are ratcheted on a single hinge to get you just about 90 degrees. I say let's give it to them. Got some gunmetal silver down here on the gray. This is a softer plastic like throughout. I mean, some gunmetal silver there on the back, but especially these bits, like you could chew on it. And rubber, silver, red paint, black paint, gunmetal paint, and silver paint all looks good. Ankles, you have this extra bit here, which you can use as a heel spur if you'd like. Uh, doesn't hurt a thing. And then you can have an ankle tilt back which doesn't really help you much not much forward so that's unfortunate you do have a toe swivel which acts as the ankle rocker as well as an additional ankle rocker so there's no need for the extra swivel there for robot mode so all in all no real issues uh to report and the back of him cleans up very well size comparison wise there he is with mp11 transformations breakdown and uh blue streak uh he is a little bit big that is the cost you have to pay for some of these larger combiners all right, so let's get them transformed. You can, let's see, let's start with the hands. It's easy, just an easy thing to get rid of. And while I'm doing it, I can start thinking about the next thing. Uh, typical third party slash masterpiece kind of thing. Tuck the hands inside, fold them up. Slide the head back, open this up. This actually has to twist around. And you can open up your shoulders here to get clearance for these, which has to come out around that peg there. And then you fold this piece in and just get them out of the way. Fold it in, get them out of the way. All right, you can rotate this down and you might need to make some room in order to get these these got to come underneath so to speak so don't rotate them all the way out of the way they got to go on the other side so there you go rotate the steering wheel up take your windshield spin it around 180 plug it back in open up these little uh flank sections here and now you want to get it so that you can have access to all of that bit of business and get it out and then there's a double hinge here that it will get into place and then this will open up there you need to take the arms because obviously the wheels need to fit like this and in order to get the arms in there you break here at the bicep make sure that this is rotated and then this should fold back onto itself. And this whole section here rotates and comes up. So same for the other side. Break at the bicep. And then make sure that you have this rotated so that this indentation is facing uh, towards the piece that you're bending it towards. Fold this up, these two pieces will tab together. This hood comes down, all that tabs in, and underneath here, you can just lay these down flat. And there's just a series of tabs here. There. And there. That'd be good enough for now. We'll clean it up. And then rotate these wheels down just enough where they will spin. And I think that's right. 
Make sure your windshield is intact. And that is the front section of the truck. Now, this part, unfortunately, kind of sucks. So, rotate here and here. Unpeg this piece and this piece. That was a bad little tolerance on this one. And then you want to open it. Uh, I guess we can fold. Spin the toe around and flip that up and that like that. And then we want to open this up. And as we do so, we want to rotate it around the tire. And then we want to sit it on this double hinge inside of the leg so that this ends up becoming the seat of the Jeep. Now, it doesn't seem so bad, right? Wait for it. Let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and do the toe first, spin it around. I will say also the bottom here is textured, uh, the bottom of the foot, so it should sit fairly well on your shelf. Rotate that around. This up. Rotate around. Sit double hinge here, and then there's like a series of hinges and swivels here. Do the best you can to get that down. And then this flush and that up. And now you have to wrap this around and plug this in to everywhere. Wait, what have I done wrong here? This has got to be up. Sorry about that. There you go. That's much better. Just the issue of me staying oriented, per usual. There. All right. So now you wrap this around, and you've got to line up uh, basically the world. And as you do so, you need to also bring this piece down and bring this piece down. And all of this will, in theory, sandwich together. How easy that is, is largely up for debate. But we shall give it our best shot. There we go. Dude, pretty good. Oh, I forgot a piece. <laughs> There, oh my god. Not the most fun thing in the world, but it's done. And I know I'm gonna have to speed that up because I was bored watching myself do it in person. Uh, I'll get them cleaned up, we'll take a look at them. So there it is all armed up, looks pretty good. No real complaints anyway. Rolls like a champ. Uh, this one tire is a little tight. It's this one, I guess, but it's not a big deal. It's fine. Uh, I love, I love how this looks. I think this looks very G1. It gives me a lot of feels. I don't necessarily care for all the, the, the ways in which it takes. It's still not plugged in right there. Whatever that it, it takes to get it here. It's a little frustrating. It's not fun. The front part is is great. It's this back part that is uh, a bit obnoxious. Uh, you got the rear wheel on the back. You know, it's just I don't know. It's really cool. It's a cool looking Jeep. Size comparison wise, there it is next to Tiger Track, so right in line. Getting it into leg mode seems to be a lot easier, but there is one step that I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I understand. But what you do is you take off this wheel here, and then you can attach that on to the back of here so it will store, which is nice. Uh, this doesn't want to cooperate now, but you get the point. And then it shows that this piece here comes forward. I can't get it to budge for the life of me. I've tried pushing on both ends. I've tried pulling. I was able to get it as I was transforming it back. It's not the whole piece. That's my problem. It's just this section that flips up. I'm guessing that's to connect it to Onslaught. So it's just this here as a heads up. It's one panel. Otherwise, you lay this flat, you unplug the hood, and then you go back like you're going back to robot mode. Tuck that underneath. 
And then you want to separate this a little bit. So it wouldn't have worked if I had the wheel plugged in anyway. And then you take this, these two tabs have two corresponding slots on both uh, biceps. We won't push it any further for right now. There are some tolerance issues with this thing that I'm not crazy about. But stands all right, you know, and then uh, the Bruticus uh, onslaught plugs into the back of here somehow, and you'll be able to get your rocker. You know, I don't know if you're going to be able to get a tilt at all, but looks pretty solid. Final thoughts wise, there are some issues here. Most of those issues have to do with transformation and making sure all these panels are lined up. It's frustrating. The, the thing I can compare it to the most is uh, in terms of getting all those tabs and everything to line up is it reminded me a bit of Make Toys Chrome Dome. Like I was having Make Toys Chrome Dome flashbacks a bit. Other than that, everything is pretty much good, but there is one other negative that we have to talk about, and that is the articulation. There are some articulation issues here, namely in the way that this bumper affects the hips and in the way that the shoulders don't get much of an outward movement. So you might find yourself being in a couple of limited circumstances when you go to pose this guy. It doesn't mean you can't get a good, decent pose out of him dynamically and, of course, stoically, but uh, it does mean there are some limitations. Uh, Paint-wise, there, there's, there, there's, I think there's enough, uh, but it's barely enough. And, and that's really my only complaints. Positives-wise, it's a great sculpt. The sculpt carries through in all three modes. It's definitely Swindle. It's unmistakably Swindle. His presence is definitely there. A little bit dead in the eyes thanks to the light piping if you don't have a light sitting right on top of his head. And who has that in their display? The materials feel okay. Uh, there are, after after the transformation, like there's a really big stress mark on one of these tabs. So there, there are some softer plastics here and then this rubbery stuff, um, which is like taking a beating. So I'm not sure how I feel about that either. But really, it, this guy comes down to sculpt and presence. That's where his strengths are. So do I recommend it? Yes, yes, I think it does a good enough job, and I think that you'll be happy. I think you're more happy right out of the box than you are after you finish seeing all the modes, but I definitely still recommend it. I can't recommend it for the combined mode yet because we haven't combined it, and uh, I can't say anything about that until we're there. So I hope that helps. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.